Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we shall look at some ideas that you can use in your snake game to earn bonus points, to learn more and also to make your game more interesting. Uh, now, snake game in my mind is a very, very interesting game because one, it's very interesting to play and two, it brings together a lot of concepts in scratch, for example, lists, broadcasting, cloning, local variables and so on. So it, it's a very nice game to build to really learn a lot about scratch about programming in general uh, now moving on to the bonus ideas as always you know i would first like to remind you of some basic rules about uh, you know about the bonus uh, which is that remember bonus comes after basic you always earn bonus what you can do for bonus is almost endless what earns your bonus today may or may not earn your bonus in future bonus is your opportunity to push yourself try out new things and amaze everybody However, remember rule number one, that bonus comes after basic, right? Now, in this case, the basic concepts really are about lists, about cloning, about using variables only for this sprite, uh, and so on and so forth, right? Which you must kind of get familiar with before you venture into the bonus part, right? Uh, also, remember to add instructions slash description on the project page so that we know clearly what bonus ideas you have tried, which, you know, greatly helps us when we are marking your assignments. All right, so moving forward, uh, you know, what are the ideas that we could think of? In fact, there are many, many, many ideas. Uh, it took me a long time to sort of condense them down to these few points that I will discuss here, right? Uh, first thing that I can think about is to speed up your snake during the game, right? Now, uh, remember in, in our game, the snake moves some number of steps and then it waits for a while, right? The right way to do the speeding up would be to change the wait time and not the number of steps. The reason is that you know the number of steps the snake is moving you know it's it's a, it's it's dependent on the size of the snake and the costume that the snake is snake and a head and the body have right so if you change that your game may start to behave a bit odd hence the right way to, is to change the small wait time that we are giving after moving n steps right uh, now there's a project that i'm putting in the description please take a look at that uh, i think you'll get an idea from uh, uh, how this can be done but this is a really nice uh, very cool feature right uh, next, we can think about different kind of fruits, right? So in our class game, we just had one fruit, an apple, which gave us exactly one point. And you know, the, whenever the, app, uh, the snake ate that apple, uh, the you know its its tail became added by one. Its tail got added, like one more tail got added, and it got one point, right? But really, we can have more. Uh, we can have, for example, fruits which give us maybe two points or three points, right? In which case, there are two clones created or three clones created. Um, uh, and then they get attached, right? So, you know, again, you have to be careful about the snake ID, the clone IDs that are being generated, but, you know, this is the idea, right? Similarly, you can have clones, uh, you can have fruits, which are more like some kind of poison, which, you know, uh, if if the snake eats them, then it gets a negative point. The player gets a negative point, right? Now, negative uh, point is actually very, very interesting because it involves shrinking the snake body, right? So, unlike the, uh, you know, the positive points, which makes a new clone and you know attaches that to the snake existing snake a negative point will cause you to remove a certain amount of clones and then hence in the process shrink the snake body right now uh, this has to be done a little bit carefully because for example let's say some fruit gives you negative five points uh, but your snake has only three clones in there right so i mean the snake body has only uh, three clones have only been created right so you can only remove three you cannot go and remove just five right so so you have to do a little bit carefully uh, but it's very interesting. Now, one more problem that kind of comes up when you have multiple fruits in the arena, then, you know, it's possible that these fruits go and fall on each other, which is going to cause confusion. Uh, so really, you should detect this situation and send the fruits again to random locations, right? Uh, basically, figure out if they're touching each other and then move them away, right? Uh, moving on, you know, let's think about how the game ends, right? Now, in the, stand, in the most simplest form that we kind of did in the class, the game ends when the snake goes and touches the edge of the playing stage, right? However, there's also, you know, uh, if for those of you, especially if you've played this game in the mobile phones and so on, uh, you'll notice that there are also games where the snake game ends if the snake goes and touches its own tail, right? Uh, so you could do that. So you can end the game once the snake head touches its own tail. However, do it after a certain score. The reason is because the way we are doing this, uh, if we put, do not put that condition that, you know, this happens, uh, the snake head touching its own tail, remember, 
uh, the tail and the snake actually touch each other the moment they are formed, right? So uh, for the first clone itself, right? So the game will end immediately. For this reason, I recommend that you let the score build up, let the, uh, let the snake reach a certain size. After that, you know, if the snake goes and sort of rolls onto itself, then the game gets over. Uh, now, moving forward, snake game is one game where I felt that you can really, really combine ideas from multiple projects to make it very, very interesting, right? So I'll just give you a few of such suggestions. I'm sure there are more. Uh, I'll let you explore them yourself. Uh, but some of these that came to my mind sort of, uh, you know, uh, very uh, easily. Maybe I'll just share that with you, right? Now, the first thing is about obstacles within the snake playing arena, right? Now, you think about it, you can make kind of like a maze. So the snake must navigate that, right? So the snake has some uh, some areas where it can go, some areas which cannot go. If it goes and touches those, then those areas within the, uh, I mean, those, let's say, sprites or those uh, maybe, you know, some kind of lines or whatever, right? Then the snake just dies, right? Uh, so that's kind of like putting a maze inside an arena. Similarly, you can go back to your spot, the hero game, or say the Ghostbuster game, where we had this concept of timeout that even if, you know, the fruits are not eaten. Let's say the snake doesn't eat the fruit. Even then, they take a new position, right? So that's, I think, pretty cool because it keeps the game alive, right? It doesn't, it prevents the, you know, user from just sort of hanging around doing nothing, right? Because those fruits are going to move around, uh, you know, without being eaten, right? So uh, similarly, you can have, let's say you can keep track of how long the snake lasts in the game. In fact, that's quite interesting because uh, this game actually gets harder and harder to play as the snake becomes long, right? So along with eating apple or fruit, it's, it's some skill to kind of manipulate this, uh, the snake in the arena, right? Uh, fourth one, which I think is very, very, very interesting is that you can create a playing boundary, right? Now, what I mean by that is that instead of letting the snake play on the entire stage and detecting if it's touching an edge, you can reduce its playing area. So you can create a boundary for the snake. Uh, you can reduce the playing area using, you know, uh, uh, let's say a boundary sprite or I recommend using a pen. So it's kind of like combining a pen platformer with the snake to create this playing arena. Now the beautiful thing here is that you can make this play area become smaller and smaller as the game goes on, right? So uh, in order to kind of uh, bring this alive to you to kind of make it illustrative this thing, I have created a game of this sort which is a very elementary game. I've just added this feature onto the class game and I'm sharing that link in the description below. Please take a look at that. Uh, you will kind of get an idea of what I'm trying to do. But I think this is a very powerful idea. You can use it in in sort of a very interesting ways, right? Now, moving forward in a similar way, right? We can think about something called secret passes slash infinite walls. Now, what I mean by that is that, remember in our game when the snake went and hit the edge, right? So maybe it's right edge or the top edge, bottom edge, whatever edge, it just ended right now but it could be that you know this wall is a sort of go through wall so if it goes and hits on the right the snake comes back and appears on the left right similarly you can have a situation where there's a small you know mark on the uh, let's say on the playing arena if the snake goes inside that then it appears somewhere else right so that's kind of like secret pass right now the reason this is very interesting is because this really shows us the power of lists how the snake will appear broken but actually it will all be together right now once again to make it come alive for you i have put together a very simple uh, project it's basically a modification of the class project very simple modification where i have implemented this uh, for you to take a look and you know sort of uh, maybe build on it right uh, once again i'm pulling putting that in the description and i'll also discuss this later on in the in this video right now, there are so many of these ideas. Uh, how do you put this all together? So my thought was you could have multiple levels to capture all these ideas. So for example, maybe in level one, uh, you can have a situation where everything is normal. There's one apple probably with the snake, just like the class game. You know, then level two probably happens after say a score reach a certain point, then you go to level two. Maybe you get another uh, fruit, which is, uh, you know, probably giving negative points. Then you go to level three, maybe where, you know, uh, the snake, gets perhaps a little bit longer and so on and so forth. So, you know, uh, uh, snake, it starts to die when it touches its own tail. Uh, then you can have like another level where you have obstacles created. You know, you have some secret passage that go to some, some other place. And all along the playing boundary keeps is continuously decreasing, right? It's going to be a lot of work. So, you know, choose your uh, battles carefully, uh, do them. But all I'm trying to tell you is that there's a, just kind of, you know, appeal to your imagination on what all can be done, right? Now, uh, 
before we wrap this up i just had one very interesting thought as i was putting together this uh, entire set uh, i see that this game can be converted very nicely into a two player game so instead of one snake head you have two snake heads uh, one of them is controlled using the arrow keys and other one could be controlled say from the left side of your uh, keyboard set the w a s d in which case you have a two player game now these two could be competing for the same fruit or they could even have their own fruits right so the entire thing could be done very interestingly but what that would mean is more lists uh, more variables to take care of and hence obviously more effort but pretty interesting thought if you think about you know building a two player snake game right so all right now as always i will show you these ideas in context of the game that we built in the class now the first thing that i said is to speed up the snake as it goes along now notice in our game you know we always have say in this case we had move 15 steps and wait say 0.1 seconds now depending on the costume you might want to do 10 steps 12 steps and so on and so forth uh, so i would not recommend you to change this but you could definitely change this thing so maybe as the game goes on as the score increases probably you can reduce this waste time right uh, i mean waste wait time so you can have maybe uh, 0 0.01 seconds 0 0.001 seconds and you find that snake is moving faster and faster uh, next i spoke about uh, you know uh, i spoke about let's say yeah, so I spoke about different kinds of fruits, right? Notice in our game, we only have apple and apple changes the score exactly by one, right? Uh, however, you know, uh, it's definitely conceivable that I have probably, let's say, not just an apple, but I have maybe an apple and let's say uh, guava, right? Or an or orange, whatever, right? It's possible that orange gives me two points and apple gives me one point, right? So you have to basically create a new sprite, write the code accordingly. You can, in fact, have a situation where maybe eating an orange gives you a negative point right in which case what you have to do is to figure out that that particular fruit has been eaten and in go to the snake body and basically remove some number of clones right so you'll have to delete certain number of clones uh, the way to do that would be to figure out how many clones you already have and that is done using the snake clone id if that number is more than the number you know that you want to reduce then go ahead and remove that many clones otherwise just reduce uh, you know what is the appropriate number do not go like you can't go negative number of clones right so uh, i think negative thing is quite interesting to do right so you could try that uh, then i spoke about finishing the game when you know uh, okay so before i go there sorry if i have multiple fruits then sometimes they might fall on each other the best way to handle that is that when these two fruits are touching each other just make sure send one of the two again to a random position and i think that should suffice right now i talked about Ending the game if the if the snake head goes and touches its own body. In fact, this project uh, which I've shared with you implements that. And the way I do that is that in the snake head, right, I have the small code that if the snake clone ID is more than ten, which means at least ten clones have been formed, right? If the tenth clone or beyond goes and touches, let's say the snake head, right, uh, in which in that case the game gets over, right? So this, like I said, you know, if you do it immediately as the game starts, it will be quite cumbersome. But you can always give a little bit of a break, like a little bit of a room for the snake to build up, and then if it goes and touches the snake head, the game gets over. And and you can see that in this project. Basically, it's quite simple. Uh, do it if you do it from the snake body clone, right? Then I spoke about combining ideas for different projects. For example, you know, here my snake is completely free to move wherever it wants to move. Uh, but then I could have some obstacles probably which the snake has to avoid as it's going around. Uh, I could have some kind of walls or whatever, right? I can have a timeout. So notice here my snake, you know, must eat the apple for the apple to take a new position. But I can clearly have a situation where if I do not eat the apple for a long time, it anyway goes to a new position, right? Uh, in fact, if you have apple and orange, the same applies to those. So it's really like you spot the hero, right? Uh, then I spoke about, you know, keeping track of how long the player has been in the game. I think that's quite simple. Use a timer. So start the timer and then you can figure out how long, you know, it took before you hit the edge and the game actually collapsed, right? The, I mean, the snake actually got, uh, the game all got over, right? Next, I spoke about creating a playing boundary, right? Now, the way uh, to think about is that, you know, in this case, the entire stage is the sprites boundary, but notice I've created a project for you here where I have created a boundary very, very similar to your pen platformer. In fact, I've used the same, uh, you know, functions, draw line, draw rectangle to create these, uh, you know, these rectangle, which sort of forms the arena. Now, if the player touches this color, the player dies. And furthermore, notice that in this game, the 
the playing area keeps becoming smaller and smaller as the snake becomes longer right so so it's kind of quite interesting because now i have to manipulate the snake in a smaller area and the game gets quite interesting that way right now this project i'm sharing uh, so notice when i touch this color the the game got over so this area will keep on getting smaller of course it doesn't become too small but uh, that adds a very interesting element to the game right uh, next i spoke about some secret passages so the best way to illustrate that is you know is another game that i've created for you uh, i'm going to share this with you here notice i have got this small block black box uh, if the snake goes there, right, it basically, so let's say, let's build up the snake a little bit and then just see it, right, so I let the snake build up, right, uh, maybe let it build up a little bit more, okay, so now I'm going to go through the secret box and see what happens, right, so that's a secret passage to a new place, right, so if I go here, notice my snake ended up on the different place, so it's kind of just jumped from one place to another, the beautiful thing was that the tail just followed, that's because we have used lists, and lists take care of where all the snake is going, right? So notice once again, if I go there, uh, if I go, okay, I didn't really hit that point. Let's see this right again. Right? Notice how the snake starts appearing from the other side, right? And I think this is a really cool idea uh, because you can have such secret passages to go, for example, from one level to another. And that's what my next idea was, which is to create multiple levels. I've given lots and lots of ideas. You could put them in a different level, uh, you know, uh, Say one level speeds it up, second level brings out a new fruit, third level has a secret passage, fourth level has something, has a maze-like structure and so on and so forth, right? Uh, finally, I spoke about creating a multiplayer game, right? Now, basically what we have to do is to have, say, two snake heads and two snake bodies, right? So, uh, when, and obviously you have to have lists individually for them and you can assign them different keys, right? So, for example, here I have up, down, uh, you know, up, down, right, and left arrow for my snake head. I can have another snake head which moves with W, A, S, and D. Um, and then, you know, the two of them can really be two players playing with each other, trying to eat the same apple, and then you can create some rules on your own. And I think that will be really, really cool in fact, right? So, in short, there are lots of things you can do. Uh, this game is actually very interesting, I think. Uh, most important is that you be systematic, go step by step, enjoy the process, and you'll see that your creative juices will come out by themselves right uh, and and you will really do very very well at this right i hope you find this video useful take care thank you very much bye bye